In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I installed this transfer switch into my service panel, and now I'm powering my entire shop with this Opus Mega 2 power station. I did make every effort to make this as detailed as possible so anyone can install a transfer switch like this, whether you're doing a 30 amp or a 50 amp transfer switch. There is a quick disclaimer I need to make. I am not a licensed electrician or a certified electrician. This is a fairly simple process, but if you're not comfortable with those risks, you should probably reach out to a licensed or certified electrician to come out and install the transfer switch for you. Now let's rewind in time and start from the beginning. And before we get started, let's discuss what you'll need to complete this project. You're going to need a transfer switch and I'm using the Reliance ProTran 2 30 amp transfer switch. It comes with everything you need to hook it in uh, to your electrical panel and we'll get more in depth than that in just a little bit. Depending on the circuits you choose to back up, you may need some additional breakers because this is equipped with four 15 amp breakers and two 20 amp breakers giving you a total of six circuits. Well, for my setup, I need to back up additional 20 amp circuits and I need to do three of those. So I need to purchase three more breakers to take the 15 amp circuits out of here and replace them with 20 amp breakers. And we'll talk more about that, something very important a little later because you wanna make sure that you're choosing the right breaker to install in your panel. For my wire connectors, I'm using these Wago 221s and I have some with three connections, two connections and single connections, but it's very important that you get whatever you're gonna use that's compatible with the size gauge wire that you're gonna be connecting. This is 12 gauge wire, so we needed something that was compatible with connecting 12 gauge wire, and these are uh, perfect for that. And that's basically all the hardware you're gonna to need to connect that transfer switch into your panel. Now we're gonna talk about the tools that you're gonna need. I'm gonna run through these really quick. We have a wire stripper and a wire cutter or you can have one tool that does the wire cutting and the wire stripping uh, together. I prefer this type of wire stripper. It just works so much better. And a screwdriver, a four-way. I have a, another four-way to just make certain things quicker. I have a drill and a step bit. You may not need the drill and the step bit if you're not drilling into anything. I'm gonna to have to be drilling into my electrical trough with this to create a hole in it. But if you're using a knockout in your panel box, then you definitely won't need this. But certainly wear ear protection, gloves, and eye protection. And before you start your project, it's important to locate the essential circuits that you would like to back up. In my scenario, I'm gonna be backing up these lights and these lights, they're both on 15 amp breakers. And then I got four 20 amp breakers that I'm gonna be backing up. And that's all the plugs that are in my shop. Let's discuss what comes with the transfer switch. You'll get the user manual, an outdoor plug. Uh, if you're placing this through a wall and you need something on the outside for an outside generator, uh, you'll get an adapter for a 20 amp plug. I won't be using that adapter, but with this model, it does come with it. You'll get some electrical wire nuts and the fittings that you're gonna to need to connect into your panel box or in my scenario, I'm using an electrical trough. Next is a 10 foot 30 amp electrical cord. These things are pretty expensive, so it's nice that it comes with it. We get 18 inches of conduit with the protective sleeves already installed. And of course, the transfer switch. And I think it's important to talk a little bit more about the transfer switch because although it's a 30 amp transfer switch with a 20 amp um, 240 volt breaker right here, this is a dual breaker. Then we've got single uh, pole breakers right here that are 15 amps. We can change these out. And I'm gonna be doing that in my install. Uh, the 20 amp, I'm actually gonna change this to two single pole 20 amp breakers. And then we're gonna remove that little connection point right there. So these will be single pole 20 amp, allowing me to back up the circuits that I need to. If you were in a scenario and you needed a 30 amp uh, dual uh, pole, then that would work also because you could put a maximum of a 30 amp breaker in this slot right here. These are 15 amp breakers that are installed. I only need two of them, so I gotta remove two of these, and I'm gonna install 20 amp breakers, which is the maximum that you can install on that. We'll talk about this up here in just a minute, because first, I wanna talk about the wiring. And this has been pre-wired with 10 gauge wires. You'll see here, 10 gauge on that. That will handle the 30 amp breaker 
for the maximum that that can handle up here. You see A and B for 30 amps. So that 10 gauge would handle the 30 amps. And then each one of these have a maximum of 20 amps. So we need 12 gauge wire down here. And that's exactly what we have. And once I get this wired up, I'll show you exactly how this functions and how to operate the transfer switch. This next step may be something that you could skip. I gotta change out a couple breakers, so I have to open up the panel box. If that's something that you're not really interested in, I'll have chapters in this video and you can skip right to the next chapter. But I'm gonna open this up and look on the inside of this transfer switch. Now what I need to do is remove this bridge and this bridge to create independent breakers rather than having one breaker. Then we'll have two 20 amp breakers here. And then I'm gonna remove this 15 amp breaker, this 15 amp breaker, the blue and the orange wire, and replace these with compatible breakers to this panel box. And you can use any of those that you see right there. I'm gonna be using the very bottom there, the G-E-T-H-Q-L, because we have G, uh, GE uh, style breakers in here already. And to remove the first one, just rotate it out. We just turn that centerpiece until it backs out the pin completely. Be kind of careful when you get near the end of it because this piece will drop and sometimes fall down in the box. So come out like that. And after further review, I don't know if this is one of those breakers where you can just remove uh, the bridge and create two independent breakers because the markings are not indicating that these are two separate breakers. This looks like one breaker that has been combined because you can't pull it apart. So I'm going to actually install two individual 20 amp breakers right here and then two right here. I'm just going to remove this breaker completely. Now we have two individual 20 amp breakers versus one 20 amp breaker. And just in case you're wondering, the white wire and the red and black wire that we see here that have nothing connected to it, that's what hooks to your plug, whether you're using this box or you're going to be hooking it uh, into the front panel. And a problem that I've ran into is getting this ground wire connected to this casing because the only area that I see that you can do it is right here. But my problem with that is this is a 10 gauge wire and that is a 12 gauge wire. I tighten this down really tight. So this is not gonna go anywhere, but I just don't like putting two different sizes on anything. But there was no area in the back that had a tap so I can uh, create something to tap into the back and, and tap this into it. So. I had to go with this because I got to put this ground into the back of the plug. And to plug the wires into the back, we have these markings on the back. So this is a G for green, a W for white, a Y will take the black wire, and the X will take the red wire. Now that I found the placement and everything, I took the transfer switch back off the wall so I could drill in to my electrical trough. And if you're unfamiliar with the step bit, it allows me to be able to drill this a little bit at a time to make sure I get the right size for my threads. I'm gonna take it to about right at one inch. And before you put your conduit into your fitting, be sure to have the protective sleeve installed. So when it gets installed, it's protecting the wires when you pull them through it and it doesn't snag the wire and get damaged and possibly cause a short. I've got everything cleaned up. I went ahead and installed the conduit and I've tightened it down on this side. And the reason I'm doing it like this is because I wouldn't be able to tighten this down and get this nice and secure if um, I don't have it on the back side and I can't get to it if we have the transfer switch installed up here. So I've taken it off the wall, tightened this down, installed this, then we'll put the transfer switch back on the wall and run the wires through the conduit. And if you find that the fittings are moving around, you'll need to take the face plate back off and tighten down the nut on the inside because you want these nuts to be tight uh, on these fittings. Up to this point, I haven't had to turn off any power, but I'm about to put the wires into the service panel and you wanna make sure to turn off the main breaker. If you're working in a main service panel, then the bus bars on the back side are gonna remain live and very dangerous. I'm working in a sub panel today, so I'm able to turn the breaker off at my main service panel and have absolutely no power in that panel. And the way that I have this trough connected is I have three areas that I can enter. And I'm gonna use this very first one because it's closest over here. And we're gonna come up over and then we'll enter to the box. 
And the first wire that I'm gonna hook up is the ground wire. And I have my ground bar over here. It's separate from my neutral bars. So if you're working in a main panel, more than likely you'll have those uh, being bonded. So that just means your ground and neutrals are bonded together. In a sub panel, you can't have that. So we have it separated over to the side. So I just need to make a connection up here on one of those uh, boats. And I've ran my wire up and made a mark. Now I'm just gonna cut it to length and then we'll strip it back about a half of an inch. And the second wire that I work on is the neutral. So I've ran it up here behind the wires to kind of get it up out of the way and then put it into the neutral bar. Now I'm gonna connect the breakers to the transfer switch. And I know that I'm gonna use this 20, these 320s and this 215s. I've set the panel cover over to the side here just for reference. And finding the wire that corresponds with the breaker is very simple. Each one of these wires have a marking on it. This is a uh, black and red A. So you see the A's right there. And then this has the A's right here. These are corresponding letters at the top, which represents this breaker is A. So this wire represents that breaker. Then we'll take the red wire and connect it into the breaker. And for our final connection, we need to connect the two black wires together. Now we can't use the Wago 221 on this wire because this is a 10 gauge wire and this is only rated up to 12 gauge. So we're gonna use a wing nut here. And we're gonna tighten it enough that it actually starts to twist the wires. And we we'll continue doing that process over and over until we have them all connected. And before I end this video, I do want to show you this working in action. So I've got it hooked to an Opus Mega 2 power station with an additional battery for just more capacity. Uh, and I've got videos on that if you want to go check those out. But for today, we have this currently running right here. So if I turn the lights off right here, the main lights, you can see it gets really dark. And I've got to turn it back on. Now, if I switch this over to generator, it's off, right? But I gotta flip the breaker on. Now, that is actually running all the shop lights in here. I have 25 lights in the ceiling. That's one circuit that this is running. So now, if I turn this off, so I'm just gonna go to the uh, off position, right? If I can get it right there in the middle, it's off. But if I go down, right now, this is running it. If I go up, that's running it. So it's kind of cool how this all works out. So as long as you have these breakers turned on and you're on generator, then you got power running from your power station or your generator, whatever you have. So those lights are using 303 watts. Now the next four circuits are all plug circuits, these down here. So I wanna go ahead and turn all of these on. And now when I switch these over to generator, all of my plugs will be running from a power station. And here's the really cool part. Even if we lose power to everything, we still got power in here. Us, we are backed up from the power station. And I really hope that you found this video helpful or you found it entertaining in some way. And if you did, I really would appreciate it. Just one little favor. If you would smash that thumbs up button, it really does help me out a lot. If you have any questions on anything that I did today, be sure to leave it in the comment below and I'll respond as quick as possible.